Everybody, welcome to the True Crime Squad. This is Katie Weaver. <laughs> Listening to a bass hound cry outside my door. So I'm a oh. little was a little distracted by like my God, right now, Nellie? Really? Anyway, it's fine. It's probably fine. Uh, this is Katie Weaver. I'm here with my sister, co-host, and partner in all things crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hey everybody. <laughs> I you don't know this if you're not watching, but I gave you muted herself so she could yell, shut up. <laughs> I yelled, somebody come get now. Oh, Good okay. Well, I was guessing. <laughs> um, I saw a video of a Basset puppy being really naughty today and um, they called it Bass Assery. <laughs> this Bass Assery is because I'm eating a Rice Krispie treat and the little Basset was just jumping all over mom and being real uh, naughty. Oh my God. Well, this Bazassery is just because she doesn't like closed doors. She wants to know oh, where you're at and what you're doing. Of course. That is, mm -hmm. that would be why I have one cat in here. I managed to keep only get only one in here so you don't all have to listen to them and get in a fight because they do every time they're in my office. Yeah. They're very possessive of me. So if they're both in here, then they're pissed that the mm -hmm. other one's in here. I don't hate the fights. I, I think the kitty slap fights are, you know, fairly entertaining. Yeah. They are pretty hilarious, frankly. They're just so Especially nuts. these geriatric kitty cat fights. Right? I mean, these Got ladies old ladies are older, punching it out. <laughs> 9 and 13, and they do kick each other's butts. It's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, it's not like these. I Usually when I come in to record, a lot of times, you know, there's no one else here. And so we're in the house. And so they're bored and wondering what I'm doing. There sure. are other people here. They've got plenty yeah. of people to cuddle and see and play with. And Please go bother and someone still. else for a while. Yeah. I guess it, there's nothing wrong with being loved. <laughs> or bossed I around. I guess. And, yeah. <laughs> bossed around and having your life, uh, you know, not be your own. That's mostly what's happening here. But Pretty much, yes. Yes. We'll pretend like Maybe it's because she likes life. me. Okay. <laughs> it is, but it's also the other as well. Hmm. My gosh. Well, my gosh, here we are. We're th two days away from, uh, I almost said Valentine's Day. Where am I? Uh <laughs> Whoa, I have met, where, did I take a Jump really in long the gun. <laughs> Skip the holidays. We're going straight to Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, from Thanksgiving and busy holiday week for everybody. I'm sure all of you guys as well that are in the U.S. And I know we have a lot of listeners that aren't in the U.S. So um, for you, well, I don't greatly, celebrate and that's fine too. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit jealous because we went and did all of our shopping yesterday because we're doing Thanksgiving tomorrow or on Thursday. We have a family uh, game party, card party Friday night, and then we're doing our cookie day Saturday. So it's like we're cramming a lot of holiday into this run, week. Run, 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 run. Yeah. Because the kids will all be here and other family members will be here. And yes. Oy. So anyway, yesterday, three stores, a carload of groceries. I think I have everything. I said, if we don't have it, we're not having it. That's just how yeah. it is. <laughs> if it's not in here, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's legit. Mm hmm Yes. So have you decided what you're making for cookie day? I'm making eggnog fudge and English toffee with chocolate on top. Oh, nice. I love it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also love eggnog fudge. I'm making eggnog fudge because I'm mad. Oh. I'm mad at Ghirardelli because Ghirardelli oh. usually has um, eggnog white chocolate and only at Christmas time can you get it. And it's my favorite. I get it for Christmas every year. The last two years. No. Nowhere to be found. They have, they have traded it out for a Christmas cookie flavored chocolate. Why do we need that? For we shame. have Christmas cookies. What the hell? Get it together, Ghirardelli. So I'm like, fine, I'm making eggnog fudge then. Because I got to have eggnog some. I don't like to drink eggnog at all. However, I like eggnog flavored things. Because mm -hmm. I don't drink milk. Blah. Yeah. But eggnog flavored stuff. That's where it's at. That. Nice. Okay. I'm not an eggnog fan, but I don't hate an eggnog latte. I'll, I'll drink it yeah. in coffee. 
but that's about it. I do um, like it in coffee as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, just a little. Yeah, but eggnog fudge is killer. Well, I am making mini uh, peppermint whoopie pies, and they look amazing. And uh, Lind Linzer tarts with some special jam. So yeah, nice. I'm super excited. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot It'll of fun. Be really fun. Well, that's that's all our drama, but <laughs> there's actually Not very much drama. Plenty of true crime to talk about because that's where the real drama is at. Mm -hmm. Oh, Whoa. when isn't there? Yeah, so Christy, when you're isn't kick there? Us off with some WTF news. Yes, I am. We have entered a space in this world where we actually have to remind people that you can't just shoot and try to kill somebody every time they commit a petty crime mm -hmm. or suspected of committing a petty crime. It is yep. so ridiculous to me that people's mm -hmm. so often now is just to get out the boom boom and shoot. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so this happened a few days ago. This was at a restaurant in uh, Stowe Township in Pennsylvania. This happened last Saturday. So a uh, teenage boy went into a hook and fish chicken restaurant and uh, he, uh, he placed an order. And then when the guy at the counter wasn't looking, he reached over, he grabbed the chip, the tip jar and he took off running. Mm -hmm. So in all incredibly unreasonable and ridiculous response, uh, Mohammed Hamdan, 39, ran after the teenager and shot him three times. Holy shit. For a tip jar. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was a dumbass thing to do. Don't steal chip, tip jars, but you don't deserve for someone to try to murder you for stealing a tip jar. That is gross. No, that is insane. So, uh, Hamden has been arrested, uh -huh. although I'm concerned because they're charging him with aggravated assault. He shot that kid three times. How is that not attempted murder? Right. Holy crap. Yikes. So, the kid's mom called and said, my teenage son has been shot several times, called 911. So, of course, the police and the ambulance and everyone comes. I guess he had... He ha yeah, he has three gunshot wounds, uh -huh. two uh, wounds in his right forearm and one in his right shoulder blade. Shoulder blade. Oh, I mean, that's not very far uh -huh. from his heart. Uh -huh. I know it's the wrong side, but, you know, I mean, you just think about it. Like, right. That guy was trying well, to kill that kid. Absolutely. No one that's running towards you, chasing you, shooting, especially a lay person, has a good enough aim to know. That they're just going to shoot to injure. That That's not a thing. Right. I mean, with police, I mean, that's also not a thing. But It isn't. But thank God he didn't kill him. He's listed in stable condition. Um, there's no evidence that this kid was armed or that he threatened Hamden or anything like that. He just, when the guy wasn't looking, he snagged the chip, tip jar and ran. Mm -hmm. So he's charged now with aggravated assault. Uh he was taken into custody and is being held at the Allegheny County Jail uh, pending a preliminary hearing, which probably won't happen until December 5th. Um, he says that this is following, this happened after an incident where uh, this teenage boy had come into the restaurant with his brother earlier, um, causing him to expect them to try to steal from him. So he says basically they came in and looked like um, he thought they were kind of casing him. Uh -huh. So apparently then he was prepared to try to kill them. I, I don't know. Here's the thing, though. He's not wow. in jail. He was arrested. Uh -huh. but he was released on a non-monetary bail. Wow. He shot this boy three times. Yeah. This is not a safe person to have out in the community. I'm sorry. Like, what? I know. This is an extreme overreaction to what happened yeah. to shoot a child 15 years old three times. It's very scary to me. I just, we are living in this extreme world 
where yeah. the extreme responses that people have to slights from other people and yeah the kid should be in trouble for stealing the tip jar of course he of should course. of course should he be laid up in a hospital with three gunshot wounds hell no no that's insane yeah it is it's really scary i'm glad this young man is going to be okay yeah but he's seriously hurt mm. i don't know reading stories like this and they're they're in the news every day you oh guys. they're they're a dime a dozen yeah this yeah. extreme overreaction that just continues to happen. I mean, people knock on your front door and you don't know who they are. So you shoot through the door. Right? People turn around in your driveway. And so you run outside and shoot at them. People have lost this their is, damn minds. This is what our incredibly lax gun laws and stand your ground laws do. They embolden people to think that you can just shoot at somebody anytime they're messing with your property. And no, you can't. This young man did not threaten this guy. He didn't have a weapon. He took the tip jar. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much was in it? It couldn't have been that much money. No, that was just petty or theft. He should have called the police. He could have tried to chase the kid down maybe and get it back from him. But shoot him three times? But also in running after him, shooting at him, who else was he endangering? Right? Who else was around that also could have been hit? Yeah. It's terrifying. It, mm -hmm. It's terrifying to me. But this emboldening of people with guns that they solve everything with a gun now mm -hmm. is terrifying. Yeah. So my hope is, uh, you know, for a, a speedy recovery for this young man. And of course, mm -hmm. he'll probably face some consequences, although maybe he's faced enough consequences for stealing the tip jar at this point. I mean, getting shot three times is definitely a lot more than what he would have gotten if he'd been arrested for it. Yeah. And I hope that they deal appropriately with this business owner because I'm sorry, man, you cannot just go around shooting people. You well, can't. no. No, you cannot. So with that, I am going to kick the mic back to you for our main case. Okay. Well, sit back and relax for this tale or try to. Okay. We're going to take a step back to October of last year. Okay. So last year on October 24th in Ohio, the police saw a couple walking down the road really late at night uh, near Lake Township, near a truck stop. Okay. And the police stopped them because they had concern for their safety. And they noticed that they had a very young girl here and a man that was in his 30s. So they were like, what's, what's uh, going on here, guys? So yeah. initially she acted real sketch and lied to them about her name and her birthday. And they finally got the truth from her, her real name, and discovered that she is a runaway and had run away from foster care in a different county in Ohio. Oh, and they discovered that the guy she was with is a guy named Jonathan Jones, who was 32. Uh, she, at the time, was 16. Her name is Caitlin Coons. So okay. what they determined at that point is that Caitlin had been in a medical facility in Columbus and Jones picked her up and drove her to Millbury in a different county uh, to a Super 8. She did not have permission to leave the hospital. Uh, apparently, he, uh, they had a plan, and he pulled up out front, and she ran. And that's how she was able to escape. Oh, boy. When they searched Jonathan's phone, they found nude photos of Caitlin, as well as pictures of them having sex. And Jones admitted to the police that he was planning on selling those photos. Oh, God. So she was returned to Crash. Foster and he was arrested. Mm -hmm. And he pled guilty. And so he had been sent home on an ankle monitor. Uh, he was released uh, basically on an ankle monitor ROR on his own recognizance. 
to uh, await sentencing. So, Yikes. He, so Jonathan was living with his mother, a very kind lady named Nikki, who I'm sure had really had enough of Jonathan's bullshit, but she, nonetheless, uh, he was living with her. So, fast forward to sometime in April, late April, when there was a welfare check called in for Nikki. And some of their family had not heard from her in a time. So the police uh, went over there. And there was no Nikki. And mm. there was no Jonathan. And it appeared to them that a homicide had occurred in the home. Oh, boy. Uh, around the same time, they discovered that uh, little Miss Caitlin Coons had run away from Foster again. Oh, no. So they decided that uh, Jonathan was obviously on the run. And they suspected that Nikki may be with him. And so at the time, they were calling this a kidnapping. Jonathan sure. being in his 30s and uh, Caitlin being a minor. She was uh, at that point 17. And so they they start working with the marshals. They put out APBs. They are looking for Jonathan. And basically they are, you know, selling him as a kidnapper. That he has kidnapped uh, a child and that they're on the run together. Or he's on the run with her. Mm -hmm. Well, Jonathan is not what you would call a smarty pants. I can imagine. And it didn't take a really long time to find Jonathan, who at that point was in Mexico. The last time they'd actually been seen uh, on CCTV or anything, driving guess whose car, Nikki's, and spending guess whose money on her debit card, Nikki's. Oh, no. Uh, but they realized they could they could track Jonathan. And do you know now? Hmm. He's still wearing his ankle monitor. What? Mm -hmm. Uh, does Jonathan not understand how GPS works? Mm, I'm guessing no. no. Oh, shit. So they find them in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they arrest Jonathan and they take Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin's is very, this is a different story. I'm not really sure how Caitlin ended up back in Ohio. I'm not sure if she actually eventually got arrested. She started posting on Facebook. Mm. Can anyone come bring me back to America? Mexico is kicking me out on May 8th. And then uh, also on May 8th, she said, don't listen to another person named Michael, who she is some kind of friends with. If anyone mm -hmm. can help me get back to America, that would be cool. Anyone is allowed to bring me back. That's what she said. Then she says, on May 9th, I just got out of a shelter for the night. I need someone to come pick me up in Texas. Sorry for taking so long. I couldn't have my stuff at the shelter. Message me or comment if you can come. But people commented on that post that know her. No, she's being arrested now and extradited back to Ohio. Yeah, I mean, I would think that all is very. They not? I'm very confused. I, I'm very confused about how all that went down for her in Mexico. In the meantime, though, we've got Jonathan singing like a bird. Oh boy. So apparently, when Caitlin ran away, she came to Jonathan's, and she had been secretly living in his bedroom, unbeknownst to his mother, who, shocker of all shockers, oh didn't approve of their relationship. I would imagine. Oh, mm -hmm. no. So Jonathan says that Caitlin told him, you have got four hours to do something about your mother because she doesn't uh, support our relationship and that's not okay with me. Oh, boy. And apparently, according to Jonathan, the hours came and went because he had no intention of hurting his mother. 
And Nikki, who was 53, uh, was had opened the fridge and was standing at the fridge when Caitlin, who she had no idea was even at her home, snuck outside and got a big rock and came into the kitchen and bludgeoned her to death with it, as well as strangling her. Oh, my God. So then Jonathan and Caitlin get in the car, you know, Nikki's car, and yeah. drive to two different stores getting tarps and garbage bags. And they load up Nikki's body. They wrap it in tarps and trash bags and drive to a nearby apartment complex and throw it in a dumpster. Oh, my God. And throw Nikki's body in, in a dumpster. Yeah. And then, of course, go on the run. That is so sad, my God. So the police tell Nikki's family, well, yeah, like, she got thrown in the landfill, so. Oh, Sorry, no, it. not another time they're not going to go looking. Yeah, so the uh, family's really uh, upset because they feel like they didn't really look. They acted like they weren't really willing to look. There were some things said about how expensive that would be. And. Oh, yeah. Who cares about this human being who's been murdered? Mm -hmm. So they are still begging the police to try to recover her body from the landfill, which, uh, you know, this happened. Oh, the longer the they wait. Oh. Yeah. So unfortunately, it's probably true at this point. Nikki will probably never be recovered. But their family, of course, uh, in speaking to the news, is expressing just how horrified and heartsick they are that that's the case, that they don't have... Right any closure of a way to bury her to lay her to rest and to have a place to grieve and it's really gross it's really yeah, terrible that is. Uh, but in the meantime of course caitlin has now been charged with murder and then of course jonathan has a bunch of charges too uh you know besides the fact that he already was awaiting sentencing on the other charges from his uh in, they the press is killing me on this because they're calling it this you know inappropriate relationship this girl was 16 16 this yeah. isn't an appropriate relationship this is pedophilia oh, give right. me a break he had pictures nude pictures of her on his phone he was planning on selling mm -hmm. them so now here we are this was back in may but the reason it's all coming up right now is because they were just in court and they are uh, planning on trying her as an adult and mm -hmm. you know, Caitlin is an adult. And then of course, Jonathan and all of his charges mm -hmm. and I'm really torn and bothered by all of it. So it's, a, this is a real morality check for all of us, I think, because it's very easy to look at this case, like, okay, reading through comments on uh, her Facebook page, somebody asked, where are these girls' parents? And a friend of hers commented and said, uh, they gave up custody to the state because they could not control her and because oh, all she wow. wants to do is run away. So she was mm -hmm. in state foster, just trying to keep her, you know, trying to keep her safe, trying to keep her safe. And wow. this is where things landed. So <sighs> she's being charged. Now her attorney is arguing, wait a minute. She was a victim. This child was a sexual right. assault victim, a kidnapping victim of Jonathan Jones and was still a victim of his to the minute she committed this crime and was still right. a victim when she went into Mexico with him. And we are charging her as the capital player in this case. And how can that possibly be? It's a real gut check. I think this case. It is, it is because I mean, both can be true at the same time. Yeah. She is a victim, but she's also the perpetrator of the murder. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 she is certainly a victim. She doesn't recognize herself as a victim. And of that's where yeah. these cases get a little funny. But mm -hmm. I mean, regardless, if he had not been harboring her, if he had not kidnapped her from a hospital, because it was kidnapping, whether she went voluntarily Absolutely. or not. Mm -hmm. And if he had not been harboring her in his house, you know, he was still the instigator of all of that doesn't make what she did right because what she did is absolutely wrong but this is why adults cannot be carrying on with kids terrible things happen mm -hmm. it's awful 
Yeah, the whole thing is just awful. So I, I think it's a good one for all of us to think about this case and consider this, consider the age of Caitlin, the charges, just everything that happened. Yeah. I'm not saying that she doesn't have to be responsible for committing a murder. She committed a murder. Right. But I do think that it's odd the way the prosecution is selling this case, the mm -hmm. charges that are coming through, considering that she was a victim. And that doesn't you know, seem to be being recognized. This happens, and this happens with foster kids a lot. Mm -hmm. Girls in particular. Well, it happens with boys too, but the adultification of kids in foster care. Mm -hmm. You know, because they don't have parents standing up for them. Yeah. Um, and it happens particularly with kids, uh, with mm -hmm. black kids particularly. But it happens. I've seen it happen with uh, foster teenagers over and over again. And you're like, you don't understand how stunted they are emotionally and mm -hmm. developmentally and you know it's awful because mm -hmm. she still is a child and she still was most definitely a victim of this man yeah one other thing that happened is that a nurse from her care facility that she had run away from received a text from her during this period uh mm -hmm. while they were on the run saying that she had just killed two people and was on the run two people yeah what the hell we don't know who the other person is uh there's no charges there's no conversation we don't know if that was just a made-up story why did she text the nurse at all what did that yeah. mean you know what does that mean yeah i don't know i think this will be an interesting one to see march through the courts um I'm, I, I think it's heartbreaking on every front. I'm so heartbroken for Nikki's family and friends that just lost her in such a cruel way and unnecessary, what, what death is necessary, but you know, I just yeah. such a, a terrible way. And the fact that her body just got chucked in the landfill is. And the authorities don't give a shit to find it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just going, sorry about it. We just can't. But that's just, ugh. Ooh, who wants that's to wrong. do that? You know? That's wrong that's on every wrong. level. She's a human being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sure that that's what we know. Uh, I'm sure there's more to come in this case. I never did show you a picture. This is Caitlin and Nikki and Jonathan. Wow. God, she does look young. Right? She looks like a baby. She does. Because she is. I'm sure that's why when the police saw them initially, they did yeah. stop to see what the hell was going on because they had to have taken a look at her and gone, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Are you kidding? Yikes. Yeah. So, uh, Jonathan, you deserve all the charges, bro. All those charges yes caitlin i don't know what's going to happen to you i don't even know what to say but she had the capacity to do this i mean think about the the veracity of or the uh like the violence of going you take care of your mother you take care of your mother she also had posted on facebook that life's great when you have your own house in ohio oh my god mm-hmm but really no concept of consequences. Yeah. No forethought of what would happen after they did this. Right. Be curious to no. know what, what her diagnosis is. Mm -hmm. Well, but also she's with a man who's, you know, not real bright himself. And so no. he's not thinking ahead either. They're just mm -hmm. two teenagers on the run mentally, really. Oh, definitely. The police did tell the mm -hmm. family that, uh, their story about where they dumped her body uh that the pings from his cell phone and apple watch both line up to that perfectly wow it seems like he really sung like a bird and has told the police mm -hmm. the truth about everything and yeah. here we are so anyway we'll keep a close mm -hmm. eye on this one i'm curious to know what you guys think about this case and uh what you think should happen uh you know and where you're out on it. But with that, Christy, I'm going to turn the mic back over to you for some Florida man. Uh, yeah.
I would imagine none of you have ever considered what you would do with five baby alligators <laughs> oh, dear. being in your bathtub. But here are some pictures of said baby alligators. But Why is it our, always alligators, you know, man? Oh, right? Our Florida man of the day. Uh, he's from St. Cloud, Florida. And he's in some trouble with the uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife and the police because uh, apparently he uh, stole five baby alligators from a pond near his house. And he's been ah. keeping them in the bathtub at his house. Okay. Someone called in a tip to the police and said, uh, I know some dumbass that's got some alligators in their bathtub. You might want to go take a look. <laughs> so they did. Uh, they found the alligators in the bathtub. They also thoroughly searched the rest of the house to make sure that there wasn't anything else in there. Like he didn't have a tiger in the basement or who the hell knows what else is Florida. Could mm -hmm. be anything. Uh, they did take the gators and they have been taken to a safe place. Um, they did, uh, you know, pick up uh, Mr. Robinson, uh, who had the gators. He caught the alligators, and uh, we weren't really sure how long he's had them, nor uh, what he's going was going to do with them. So I, I thought maybe we'd have a little fun in the comments. I'll give a couple of my own thoughts, and then maybe you can share in the comments with us. What do you think he was going to do with five baby alligators? Because first of all, they're little right now, but you know, mm -hmm. they get much bigger. I was thinking Yikes. maybe he's going to start an alligator wrestling business. Okay. He was okay. training them up young to be used to it. He's wrestling them at home, teaching them the moves, the arm bars and you know, all that stuff mm -hmm. so that they would know how to wrestle. And then he'd have his own, maybe even it was a traveling show. I don't know where people would witness that. Maybe he was going to domesticate them and raise domesticated alligators that people could keep in their homes. Seems legit. I'm not okay. saying these are good ideas. I'm just saying these ideas kind of go right along with the idea. Well, none of this of was a good idea. Of keeping five baby alligators in your house. I'd like to know how so. many alligators he actually caught. Yeah. Were there are more? Did they not all survive? Right. Are these Did just the five that are still before? living? Yeah. Also... Where does he shower? Does he just get in there with them? I what the? I don't know. He probably has more. <laughs> Catches them and talk, puts them in a bucket, or I I really have way more questions than answers in this situation. But I thought it might be kind of fun to mm -hmm. just you know in our comments on YouTube or uh, on uh, Spotify where you can leave comments. Let us know what you think. What do you think he was going to do with those five alligators? But I'm going with alligator wrestling business mm -hmm. where he was trying to tame them. And then breed them to raise up domestic alligators and then sell them. Because uh -huh. you know there's money involved here. Okay. Well, I'm, gonna I'm not fall saying back. he knows how to tame them. but you There know. had to be money involved here, definitely. Right. Okay. I'm going to fall back on two cases from Florida that we've covered in the past. Okay. Wondering if, A, he was going to train the alligators to help with armed robberies. Oh, because if you remember a case from Florida a while ago, a man pulled up to a drive through window, pointed a gun at <laughs> the uh, people at the window, demanded all of the money, and threw a fairly good-sized alligator in the window at them. There was that one. That's true. Maybe he got some inspiration from that story. And then there were those two geniuses that were running around the street selling those golden tickets to heaven. <laughs> oh yeah. You remember this? Yes. They were a hundred dollars. You could buy a golden ticket uh that would be your pass into heaven, and that came with a baby alligator. Yes. So maybe Which is how was... you got to heaven. Your alligator grew up and ate you, and then you <laughs> went right on to heaven. That was the delivery process. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> were were these more tickets to heaven or or hell, perhaps? But I have a different idea. A different idea. Mm. Uh, those are just things that have been done in the past. So I wondered, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if that's what he was thinking about. But I was was thinking maybe he was trying to train some kind of uh, trick alligators to take to Hollywood for movies. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Okay. You okay. know. 
if there was ever like a happy Gilmore uh, two, one of his alligators could be mm. the star. Uh, perhaps another uh, uh, Peter Pan. I, you know, the possibilities are endless. But uh, probably Adam Sandler would be involved, is my thought. But uh, yeah. that's where I'm at. Trick alligators. Okay. So there you have it. Let's hear your thoughts on what was this fool going to do with these alligators? And can we all just be grateful that the alligators have been moved to a safe place for everyone? Because mm -hmm. uh, this guy, this operation needed to be shut down for well, sure. Especially for the alligators, because uh, that's know. cruel as hell. Right? These poor animals. My God. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Lucky he got out of it with all his fingers and toes. <laughs> yeah, right. The alleys aren't really big enough to do too much yet. All appendages are still attached, so that's good news. Well, okay. Well, there you have it. This is our Tuesday episode. So we're going to mm -hmm. be back on Wednesday for another episode. And then, of course, we'll be back Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain for case updates. Big stuff in Delphi. Wow. Oh, my gosh. So much. <laughs> it'll, that'll probably be a good part of our episode is Delphi because finally I would imagine. Uh, some things have been unsealed that closed door meeting with the judge. She has finally had to turn over the uh, audio from that or, or the note, you know, the uh, video from that. And that's really interesting. Lots of stuff in Delphi um, and other things too, a pretty interesting ruling in Coburger and so mm -hmm. much. So yes. we'll be back tomorrow night with all of that. But in the meantime, Definitely. thank you all so much for being here. Please be good to yourselves and others. Please don't, um, you know, just shoot people for the hell of it. That'd be cool. That would be um, great. And if everyone could just stop doing that, I think that would be awesome. No wild animals in the bathtub, toilet, anything else. That's just, no, that's a hard just, pass. Just yep. say no. Yep. Yep. And of course, uh, more than anything, sending so much love to Nikki's family tonight uh, for all of the horror and heartaches that they have suffered at the hands of her son and of Caitlin. Hood. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. All righty. Well, that's it. This has been yet another production of the True Crime Squad. Bye, everybody.